Hello again and welcome back to the channel. This is Michael from TofuResources.com and today I want to talk about how to write a really amazing TOEFL integrated essay here in 2019. So in this video, I'm going to start by talking about the three main styles of integrated writing questions. Next, I'm going to discuss the structure of both the reading and the lecture. I'm going to give you a practice question along with some templates you can use to write your essays and together we will write a complete practice essay. So let's get started by talking about the three main styles of integrated writing questions. First up is the opposition style. This is the most common. In this style, the author of the reading makes an argument about some topic and the lecturer simply opposes this argument. Next up is the problems and solutions style. In this case, the author of the reading presents three problems related to something, and the lecturer presents solutions to each of these problems. I think that's the second most common. And then finally, you have the opposite, the solutions and problems question. In this case, the author of the reading presents three solutions to some problem, but the lecturer challenges these solutions and he says, no, they're not solutions at all. They don't work. Now, I do want to stress a few things here. First of all, no matter what style you get, you're writing the exact same type of essay. The structure of your essay does not depend on the style of the question. Secondly, I really need to stress that the lecture will always oppose the argument in the article. I repeat, the lecture will always oppose the article. The lecture never supports the article. That's a very, very common misconception. If that ever changes, I'll make a new video and let you know. But right now, the lecture always challenges the article. Okay, finally, just take a minute to pause the video and to read these actual question prompts. Now, the prompt changes depending on this style of question, right? Now, a lot of my students get really surprised when they read the prompt because it doesn't match what's in the textbooks they've been reading. They think, oh shit, this is something new that I'm not prepared for. No, 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 don't worry. Indeed, you can pretty much ignore the prompt because you're writing the same essay no matter what the style is. Please, don't be surprised by that. All right. Now let's move on to talking a little bit about the structure of the reading and the lecture. And this is really important because if you can understand the structure, your essay writing is going to be a lot easier. Now you don't actually have to read this. I know the text is really small and my big face is in the corner, but I just want you to take a look at the screen for a moment. Now I've kind of color coded it here. On the left, you've got the reading. Now, in the first paragraph of the reading, you're always going to find the main argument of the author. In the next paragraph of the reading, you're going to find his first supporting argument. In the next paragraph is his second supporting argument. And then finally, it's his third supporting argument. This structure never changes. You're always going to get four paragraphs in the reading. It's always going to start with an introduction, and then each paragraph will contain a separate supporting argument. Now take a look at the structure of the lecture on the right-hand side of your screen. The lecture always begins by stating the lecturer's main argument. And then once he's finished that, he mentions his first supporting argument. But take a look at this. The first supporting argument of the lecture always directly responds to the first supporting argument of the reader, of the reading. And then the second supporting argument of the lecture 
directly responds to the second supporting argument of the reading, and so on for the third supporting argument. That's important to remember because this structure never changes. Week after week after week, it's the same. The order of arguments in the lecture matches the order of arguments in the reading. If you can understand that, your job will be a lot easier. And I mention that now because so many of the practice textbooks don't use this structure. Indeed, even the official guide to the TOEFL published by ETS does not use this structure. I don't know why. The chapter on writing in the official guide is garbage. So just take a moment, pause the video, look at the structure, understand the structure. So, uh, in the rest of the video, we're going to use this actual question to write our practice essay. So here is a closer look at the reading. Now, as you can see, it's got an introduction and three body paragraphs. Now, I've used my highlighter here to uh, kind of simulate what it would be like if I was taking notes about this reading. Up here, I've noted the main topic of the reading, which is Easter Island. And then I've noted the author's main argument, which is that there's a few ideas about what happened to the island and its inhabitants. Now, uh, in the rest of the essay, I'm not going to read it all out to you. I'm not going to read the notes, but just pause the video and, and read it closely yourself. I've highlighted what I think are the most important details from each paragraph. Now, a couple things to note here. As far as the reading goes, pay really careful attention to the first sentence of each body paragraph. Usually, uh, that sentence will state the author's main supporting argument really broadly, and you're probably going to want to use that in your essay. And then as for the rest of the paragraph, just go through and grab out what you think are the most important details. I can't give you a shortcut that you can use to immediately identify the most important details. It's gonna be different in every essay, but with practice, it should get a little bit easier. Up next is the lecture. Of course, on test day, you can't read it. You can only listen to it. So yeah, it's gonna be more difficult. But for this video, uh, you can see it on the screen. Uh, so right away, I took a few notes about the lecturer's main argument. Now that's kind of easy because as you know, the lecturer's main argument is just going to be the opposite of the author's main argument. And then as I was listening, I try to take notes about the important details from each paragraph of the lecture. Now, as far as the lecture goes, you're not really listening for the first sentence of each uh, paragraph. The first sentence is usually just going to be the lecturer saying, no, that's wrong. Instead, you're looking for some of the details that come a little bit later. And if you pause the video, you can see which details I thought were important in this lecture. By the way, I will upload another video where I actually read this out loud and you can kind of simulate it as a real test. Just watch for that in a week or two. And uh, that's kind of what my notes would look like if I was doing this as a real test. I recommend you set up your paper at the test center just like that. Start by writing R and L, put the numbers one, two, three, and then put your arrows. And then as you read the article, take a couple notes. The first note you're going to take is from the first sentence of the paragraph. And then down below, you're kind of putting in all the details that you think are really important. Again, this line is from the first sentence of the paragraph, and then I put in the details. And the same for the third one. And then over here, again, you're just getting the important details that kind of match up from the lecture as you listen. And again, remember the order. That'll make your job so much easier. You know that once the lecturer is finished talking about rats, 
He's done. He's not getting back to that. So you move on to the next section. Likewise, when you notice that the lecturer is no longer talking about war, you move on to the next section. There's not going to be anything else about that in the rest of the lecture. Okay, let's start writing this actual essay. That's what you all came for, right? First up, you're writing an introduction. Now, on the left-hand side of the screen, I've given you a template that you can use when you're writing your introduction. And for now, I encourage you to use this exact template. Simply fill in the blanks. And of course, you're filling in the blanks with the notes you've taken. So in this case, the first sentence of the template says, the reading and the lecture are both about the collapse of the civilization on Easter Island. The author of the reading feels that there are three possible explanations for the collapse. The lecturer challenges the claims made by the author. He is of the opinion that these explanations are faulty. Just fill in the blanks. Now, some people argue, ah, will I get punished for using templates? The answer is no. You won't get punished for using templates. Please don't worry about that. It's not a problem. If it ever becomes a problem, I'll let you know in a future video. Now, a few tips for writing introductions. Uh, you can shorten it if necessary. Indeed, you can delete the whole final sentence. The introduction is much less important than the body of the essay, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Keep that in mind. Shorten it if you gotta. Next of all, I want you to practice stating the author's opinion in various ways. Now, sometimes the author has just one single opinion and all the paragraphs support it. So in this case, you would say something like, the author of the reading feels that the society collapsed because of flooding. So you're not mentioning three reasons, you're just mentioning one reason, and you're mentioning it specifically. Of course, in this case, you're saying something like, the author feels that there are three possible reasons the society collapsed. Can you see the difference? Practice with that, because a lot of students kind of struggle in this line. Likewise, if you're dealing with a problem and solution essay, you want to say something like, the author feels that there are three problems associated with voting machines. But if it's a solutions problems type, you're saying, the author presents three solutions to solving the problem of global warming. That can be kind of tricky depending on the style. The template is the same, but students have trouble filling in those blanks. So I recommend practicing as much as you can. All right, moving on to the first body paragraph. I'm not going to read this one, but I'll just draw your attention to the template on the left-hand side of your screen. In this case, the template is five sentences, and you're simply filling in the blanks with the notes that you took. Now, of course, remember, you're not going to get perfect notes. So you will be somewhat filling in the blanks with stuff from your memory. That's just a fact of life. You know, take great notes and try to remember as much as you can. If you find yourself without notes and without a memory, just be bold. Make a guess. Be brave. Just fill in those blanks. Next up is the second body paragraph. Again, I've given you a template on the left-hand side of the screen. In this case, I've made a shorter four-sentence template. I've tried to kind of mix up the grammatical structures to make the template a little bit more sophisticated. But all you have to do is fill in the blanks. If you look on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that I've filled in the blanks with my notes from the reading and the lecture. I should note too at this point that you can see the reading as you're writing your essay. So, you know, the reading notes are important for organization, but, you know, they're not quite as urgent and desperate as the lecture. 
Finally, the third body paragraph. There's a four sentence template, just fill in the blanks. Now, you know, I'll mention here too that your essay is kind of following the same structure and the same order as the reading and the lecture, right? You begin with an introduction and then your first body paragraph is about the argument mentioned in the first body paragraph of the article and then the matching details from the lecture. Your second body paragraph in your essay matches the second body paragraph of the article and the matching stuff in the lecture and so on for the third body paragraph. And uh, that brings us to the end of this essay. By the way, this one came out to 298 words. I'll talk more about word count in a minute. But first, a few tips for writing body paragraphs. I really need to stress that the lecture summary is the most important part of your essay. About 60% of the body should be about the lecture. I actually did the math on my sample and it turned out to be exactly 60%. The remaining 40% of the body should be about the reading. If you need to shorten something, shorten the reading summary. You can cut the reading summary down to one sentence per body paragraph if necessary, but never shorten the lecture summary. I need to see two sentences about the lecture in each body paragraph, no less than that. Next, avoid copying the reading word for word. Paraphrase the reading as much as you can. You know, it could be okay to copy the lecture word for word if your memory's that good, but don't copy the reading. Uh, change the verbs in the template if you feel it is necessary. You know, I think you can usually say like the author claims, the lecturer says, but if for some reason the verb claims or the verb says is a little bit funny, just change it. It's okay. Now, before I close the video, a few general tips about the integrated task. First off, don't write a conclusion. It's a waste of time. You don't need it. Aim for between 280 and 300 words. Ignore the on-screen advice at the test center. It's going to tell you 180 words is fine. That's baloney. Don't believe it. Advanced students could write a third sentence about the lecture in each body paragraph, but it is probably not necessary. Beware textbooks with bad questions. Most books are crap. And I will add that most TOEFL websites are also crap. Uh, this is something I've been struggling with for the eight years I've been teaching TOEFL. Most books contain bad integrated writing practice questions. If you want good questions, I recommend the two official uh, test collection books from ETS that uh, each book contains five good practice tests. I also recommend the official guide to the TOEFL, but only practice tests two, three, and four. Ignore the first practice test and ignore everything in the uh, chapter on writing. Finally, I do recommend the TOEFL quick prep collections also from ETS. I'll try to put a few links to those things in the uh, description of this video. Okay, that brings us to the end of uh, this introduction to the integrated writing section of the TOEFL. Uh, if you want to know more about the test or more about me, you can find me at TOEFLresources.com. The best part of that website is the section where you can sign up to have your essay evaluated and scored by me. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and shoot me an email if you like. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I check the YouTube questions every single day and I try to respond to them as quickly as possible. Um, if you've taken the test recently and you've noticed any changes, anything new, anything I got wrong in this video, please leave a comment and let everyone know. Um, you know, I'm going to make a new video about this next year and I want it to be as great and as useful as possible. 
All right, I'll leave it at that, guys, but take care and uh, come back next week for a new video. Goodbye.